In this video, we are going to show you how to replace your upper ball joint. Okay friends, it's time to get started on our job. One of the first things you need to do is safely raise and support the front of the vehicle so the wheel's off the ground with the suspension hanging. Once you've done that, continue on to removing all six of your 21 millimeter lug nuts and then the wheel. Now with the wheel off of there, you have a nice clear view of your upper ball joint. Before you start removing the ball joint nut, you're going to want to have some sort of strap. We'll tie this right around the knuckle, being extremely careful for our ABS wire. You do not want to damage your ABS wire. Once you have that tied around there, mount it to the frame. Now once you have some support on this, we can continue on to our locking cotter pin. We'll remove this and generally you just go ahead and replace it during the installation process. With that out of there, use a 21 millimeter socket to remove the nut. Now once you have the nut off of there, be extremely careful. The knuckle could break free from the ball joint and potentially come down and hurt you. That's what this strap is for. Once you have it off, we'll just take a look at it and then put it back on a couple threads. <laughs> Continue on with a hammer. We're gonna give the knuckle a couple loving bonks just to try to break the ball joint free from it. Once you have that broken free, pull down on that control arm and fully remove the nut. With that separated, we're gonna continue on to removing the ball joint boot. After you have it off of there, we're gonna have to cut the stud flush with the ball joint so we can easily press it up and out of the control arm. To cut the ball joint stud, it's going to be easiest using a cutting wheel. The next thing you need to do is use some snap ring pliers. Looking underneath the control arm, around the bottom of the ball joint, you'll find a locking snap ring. Make your way into each of those ears, gently spread them, and pull off that snap ring. That's what it looks like right there. We'll set that aside. Now we can continue on with our ball joint press and a cup that fits over the top of the ball joint. You want to make sure that you have a cup that's wide enough to make it so the ball joint can go up inside the cup. The cup itself is going to press directly against the control arm. Take the press and put it in position with the driver all the way up against the center of the ball joint. Once you have the ball joint press in place, continue tightening until the ball joint makes its way up and through the control arm into your cup. There it is, friends. Once you have it out of there, the next thing you need to do is clean and inspect the hole in your control arm where your new ball joint's going to go. Once 
Now what you want to look for is to make sure there's no rotted damage in this area. Obviously, when you put in the brand new ball joint, you don't want to have a hole that's too big for the ball joint so the ball joint can move around. It's going to be very bad overall. Okay friend, now it's time to install our brand new ball joint. When you do this, before you press it in, make sure you take off that brand new boot. Give it a quick inspection, make sure you didn't tear it during the removal process, and set that aside. There we are. Boot's still good. When you put in the ball joint, you want to make sure that you have it flat and level with the top of the control arm. Also, when you're pressing it in, you only want to press along the outer ring here. Never press along the center. You will damage your ball joint. Looking at the top of my ball joint press, you can tell I have a hole that's in the center here that'll fit right over that center area that I was telling you not to press against. Now we're gonna use a cup down along the bottom here. You wanna make sure it's a hollow cup so when you're pressing the ball joint down and through, it has space to go down. Once we get that on there, we'll make sure we have a flat adapter along the bottom so we can press it in. Let's get everything set up here. Now we'll continue tightening. You want to pay attention along the top here. You can see the splines of the ball joint where they're going to go down into the control arm. You want to make sure that the base area here or the flat area hits directly against the control arm all the way around. As you can tell, I have it pressed completely up against there. Now before I release pressure from my ball joint press, I'll just give the control arm a couple bonks to cause some vibration just to make sure it's completely seated. Remove your ball joint tool. Once you have it in there, continue with your locking snap ring. Double check to make sure it's sitting in the grooves all the way around. Now we can put the boot on there. It's a good idea to apply a little bit of lubricant inside of the joint area. When we're putting the boot on, you want to make sure that it sits completely all the way around the ball joint so no moisture or debris can make its way in and damage the ball joint. Continue on with some pliers to press it on there. Just be careful not to tear the boot. I'll make my way all the way around. Give it a wiggle to make sure it's completely secure. Now let's line up the ball joint with our knuckle hole here. Once we have it pulled down into place, we'll put on our brand new ball joint nut. Now we can bottom this out and then torque it to 58 foot pounds. Once you have the ball joint nut torqued, the next thing you want to do is pay attention to the slot on the nut in comparison to the hole through the center of the ball joint. You want to make sure that the slot lines up with the hole. If it doesn't, continue tightening the nut until the very next slot does. We'll make sure we use a brand new cotter pin for this. 
slide it through, peen it over so there's no way this nut can loosen up on its own while you're driving down the road. Remove your safety strap. Now we can reinstall the wheel. We'll start on all of our lug nuts, get the wheel safely back on the ground, and then torque each of them to 98 foot-pounds. Now we can torque these in a crisscross manner. Torqued. Take it for a road test. Make sure you don't hear any funny noises. Get yourself safely down to your local alignment shop. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.